okay? So welcome back to another video. Today's video is a definite integral where everything is natural logs of natural log frenzy. We have the natural log of x multiplied by the natural log of the natural log of x divided by the natural log of x minus 1 dx. So a lot of this stuff is, of course, we're going to be doing a lot of use substitutions. Well, not really a lot. Actually, it's um, some use substitution, but the most part is actually coming from a bunch of integration by parts. And applying the integration by parts, there comes a point that we have to evaluate the term where we have to apply L'Hopital's rule, where I'm, um, I'm, I'm gonna actually going to skip that step because it's very straightforward to actually solve that, but it's just what backs up that value on that computation. And then a lot of the stuff afterwards is that there's it comes down to a reduced value such that we would actually have to utilize a form of a poly gamma function in order to um, make the answer more, you know, as simplify as it can, because we're actually going to be because the value itself for the answer is actually utilizing the Euler Mascheroni constant. So a lot of things going on over there um, with this entire thing, rather not there, but the entirety of this entire integral over here. Um, pretty much that's all in this that Sesame said, but um, why don't we just jump right in. So for our substitution, we're actually gonna let, so this is gonna be capital I, I'll get to that in a sec. So we'll let negative T, we're gonna de let that equal the natural log of X. So if I solve for X by itself, so that means I have that X is going to equal to E to the negative T. And then if I differentiate both sides, so that means DX is going to equal to negative E to the negative T, then DT. So if I put everything back together, so now I have that capital I is gonna be the following integral. So if I plug in one for, what is it, X, so that means that's gonna be zero. Then if I plug in zero, so that means that's actually going to approach positive infinity. Then put everything back together, so ln of X, so I have a negative T, and then the natural log of, so inside of the input, so it's a negative T, then divided by a negative T, subtract one. Then we multiply with our DX differential substitution, so multiply by negative E to the negative T, and then dt. So this can be further simplified such that for one that I have to switch our bounds of integration. So that means that's a negative and then that negative cancel out itself. But we still have a negative over here. So that means it's still the negative of the entirety. So the negative integral from zero to infinity. And so I have t and then the natural log of. So let me super, let me actually simplify this a little better. So I have a negative one or a negative and a negative on the bottom. So reducing so we'll have positive t divided by positive t plus one and then multiply by e to the negative t followed up with dt so now the next thing i'll do is that applying the natural log properties we can actually see that we have a division so that means we have a subtraction of um, natural logs uh, we have to use so now this entirety is going to be written as zero to infinity um, negative times so then i have t multiplied by e to the negative t then afterwards applying that um, natural log properties i have the natural log of t and then subtract the natural log of t plus one and then close that off follow with with dt okay so now with that in mind so we can actually now perform some linearity even further so we have a subtraction of integrals that we'll be dealing with rather um sum since it's a negative and then afterwards if i distribute the negative over here that becomes positive so now i have the negative of zero to infinity our integral is going to be what is it um i'm going to write it like this e to the negative t then times t that's just how i written my notes multiply by the natural log of t then dt then next is going to be add with the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t multiplied by t and then afterwards it's multiplied by the natural log of t plus one and then ended off with dt okay so that's where we're at so far so there's some things we can actually simplify well for the fact that we actually have a nice little uh, formula we'll be using slash function we have that note specifically for the gamma function um at the parameter value n is written in the form of its um integral prop integral representation the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x and then multiply by x to the power n minus one and then dx so let's say if I were to take the derivative of the gamma function, so gamma prime of n, so we are differentiating inside the integral. So a famous trick, in other words, you want to put it in that perspective, from zero to infinity, then that means I have e and n to the negative x multiplied by x to the n minus one, but then afterwards now it's multiplied by the natural log of x and then dx. So with that being the case, notice that if I plug two for n, so that means I have gamma prime of two, so this will lead us to have the following. So I have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x. And then next is gonna be just 
x on its own and then left with the natural log of x and then dx. And you'll notice that because this integral over here is just by um, putting a dummy variable, we can actually just replace this entire thing over here with just the negative gamma prime of two. And because of that, all we're left with now is that we have to calculate this integral over here specifically. So moving on from here. So, so far capital I is what we have is negative gamma prime of two. So I negative gamma prime of two. And then now we just have to calculate this integral. So plus the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power negative t times t times ln of uh, t plus one, and then follow with dt. So now that leads to question on how are we supposed to integrate such integral? So with this, this is where the integration by parts comes in handy. So we're gonna actually have to choose our u and our dv. So we're gonna let u equals t times ln of t plus one. Then if I uh, differentiate that, so that means du is going to equal to, so that means we just apply the product rule. So ln of t plus one, and then add this with t divided by t plus one, all this in form of dt. All right, so the next thing to do is choose our dv. Our dv, I'm pretty sure it's straightforward is that we let that equal e to the negative t dt. So then that would have to mean v is gonna be equal to negative e to the negative t. Okay, so we're gonna plug everything back together. So that means I have u times v. So um, let me put a star over here to actually evaluate this. So I have negative e and a negative t multiplied by t ln of t plus one. Evaluate this from zero to infinity. Then next is gonna be a subtract, but there's a minus over here for our v and then du. So that becomes a plus. Our integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t and then multiply by so ln of t plus one then plus t divided by t plus one and then um multiply with uh, or then dt okay so actually this entire thing is going to approach zero and of course we see that of course there's the infinity symbol we plug in into all this because it's not being used as a form of a rational function but you can actually convert this to a rational function such that eventually afterwards you would have to use the application of L'Hopital's rule to get such value over here. So now the last thing, of course, is to calculate this integral over here. And what I'm actually going to do is we're actually going to do a little bit of a trick to actually make things a little bit clever for the simplification. So t divided by t plus 1 is actually can be written as the same thing as 1 subtract 1 divided by t plus 1. So let me actually replace that back over here. You're going to see why we actually um, do this sort of trick. So plus uh, 1, then subtract 1 divided by t plus 1. Okay. So with that in mind, so we can actually now just go back to, um, so really this is the next thing we have to calculate. So let me actually switch to a different marker for this. So next thing is now we actually have to do the following. So I'm gonna set this equal to, so I is then equal to, so so far negative gamma prime of two. And then now add this, so let's see, we have, um, so the integral, so zero to infinity. And of course, the thing I'm gonna do here is we're actually gonna apply all this linearity yet again. So e to the negative t is gonna be distributed into all this. And then we're actually gonna break this up into like a sum of integrals. So now this leaves us with e to the negative t and then ln of, what is it, uh, t plus one, then dt. And then the next thing is plus the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t and dt. This one's pretty straightforward to calculate. And then last thing, subtract the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t and then divide it by t plus one and then dt. This one, very straightforward to calculate. This is actually just going to equal one. So now I can actually just move this to the front. So I have, what is it, negative gamma prime of two. And then I'm gonna write this as plus one. And then next thing I'm gonna do is let's actually calculate this integral. So what we're gonna do here is over here that this is actually gonna be yet another u sub. So I'm gonna write this out to the side. So let's see, um, we're actually gonna do the same thing. We're gonna choose our u and our v. Our u this time, well, really it's gonna be pretty simplistic and straightforward because it's the same thing similar to just like the latter. So we're gonna let u equals the natural log of, what is it, t plus one then du is then going to equal one divided by t plus one and then dt. Choose our dv, we're gonna let that be e to the negative t, then v is gonna equal negative e to the negative t, um, the just e to the, e, negative e to the negative t. Over here, this is supposed to be dt. Okay, so now, um, let me actually now put this back together. So let me actually go back to the blue marker over here. 
So then over here, which I'll also say over here, this is um, gonna equal one. So, okay. So now put everything back together. So our U times dV, so let's see. This is gonna be um, then negative E to the negative T, then times ln of T plus one. Evaluate this from zero to infinity. I guess you can you can pr pretty much see that this is actually just exactly the same before. This thing, whole thing's going to approach zero. You actually use the fact that we can actually convert this to a rational function, then we get some indeterminate form, then you can apply L'Hopital's rule to actually get this value is gonna equal zero. Okay, so now minus, and then minus again, so that becomes a plus then the integral from zero to infinity of, what is it, V times du, so E negative T divided by, um, what is it, one, and then plus T, or T plus one, then dt. Okay, and then what's great, you'll notice is that that's why we did this trick, because this is just gonna um, get rid of zero, so let me actually just um, further explain that, or equals zero, but then we have a plus and then a minus over here, so that means these terms are actually going to cancel out. So really, the last thing left is that this is just equal to one plus gamma prime of two. Now, you know, depending on you, on how you wanna, you know, simplify your answers, you can either keep it this way, this is, or we can actually simplify it even further. There is indeed a way to actually determine the value of gamma prime of two. So what we use, what we use is that this specifically the poly, poly gamma function has its own um, series representation. So I think it's first worth noting that what is a poly gamma function is basically the natural law, um, the logarithmic derivative of the natural log of the gamma function. So that would mean that in other words, in, in terms of, so the psi symbol at the order zero of Z is then equal to, so meaning we have to take the derivative. So that means that's actually just the gamma prime of Z and then divided by gamma of Z. And interestingly, we have to find in a form of gamma prime of two. I'm sorry if my two looks like a Z. So uh, my mistake for that, or my apologies for that. It's just what I'm used to. So basically, in other words, in other words, we have to find it in a way so that gamma prime of two is written as the same thing as the poly gamma at the order zero of Z multiplied by gamma of Z. So we plug in the two for all this. So what we use is that um, it's series representation over here is written as, so we have the negative euler mascheroni constant and then minus, so the infinite sum at, what is it? K is equal to zero of, uh, what was it? One divided by, so that means if I plug in, so it's written in the form of X plus K and then minus one divided by uh, k plus one so for all x is in the reals. However, you can actually show that if you, um, for the positive integers, they can actually reduce to a nice formula, but we're not really gonna get into the whole specs of that. So let me now plug this back in for x is equal to two, rather z is equal to two, I should have put it that way. So that means I have k plus two. So if I actually expand this entire thing out and you can see that straightforward that this is actually in the form of a telescoping series, as you see, so I have negative, um, negative lowercase gamma, then in other words, that's the same thing, so minus, and then if I expand the series out, so plug in zero for each, so I have, let's see, one half, then minus one, add this with, now it's gonna be, what is it now, k is equal to one, so one over three, then minus one half, the next thing is gonna be two, so one over four, then minus uh, one over three, then so on, so forth, we're gonna see that some terms cancel out, so, Oops, drop my marker. <laughs> so we're gonna see that, of course, the half cancels, half cancels, one third cancels, one third cancels, one fourth, so on and so forth. We take the infinity of its entire thing. So therefore we see that this is a telescoping series over here and then everything just cancels to so just one. But then that also deduces that this is equal to this entire thing, the psi at the order zero at two. But we also have to solve for gamma two. Gamma two being that if you plug two back to the gamma function or its factorial equation, we get that this is actually, that's gamma of two is basically just gonna equal simply just one. So if I solve this by itself for gamma prime of two, so that means gamma prime of two is therefore just equal to just negative lowercase gamma and then plus one. So therefore we uh, put this back together. So deduce that I is equal to one, then subtract uh, lowercase gamma plus one. And so therefore the final answer is simply just lowercase gamma, just the euler mascheroni constant itself. And so therefore that leads to the final answer to a frenzy of a natural log integral of everything of sorts and crazy craziness going on over here. Gamma functions, poly gamma functions, a lot of um, integration by parts, just one single step of the U substitution from the very beginning. And we have everything that leads to this answer. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.